have Dole here, I think we could finish 30 bucks in February. Piece of cake, right? I hope. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so I've read 24 books in February so far, and it is currently the 27th of February. So I'm so close to reading almost a book a day. The goal, optimistically, is if I can finish 30 books by the 29th of February. We're gonna go for 29 instead. 30 is just like a nice even number. If you're wondering how I'm gonna finish five books in three days, the three days being Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm wondering the same thing because I work a 9 to 5. We're definitely going to be enlisting audiobooks, so for those who are like, audiobooks isn't reading like that's why it's called listening you're using two different muscles to do it. if you're consuming the content it doesn't matter how you consume it and in what form it counts the next part of this where i feel like this is going to be the saving grace as to how i'm going to finish five books is that i'm already in the middle of four books the first book i'm almost done with is twisted lies and i'm like this much through with it basically like 80 percent into the book i think i'm at the good juicy scene if you know you know where his desk is filled with something else i've already tabbed like an obscene amount of the book this is gonna be five stars the next book i'm in the middle of is fighting silence by ali martinez this and twisted lies were both on my TBR Claw Machine picks my reads. Fighting Silence was one of my 24 books to read in 2024 and I was so excited. I really thought it was going to be a five-star read but oh, I'm so disappointed so far. I'm just holding out hope that the ending is redeemable. Another book that I've got here is actually a special edition. I had gotten this in the mail from Fairy Loot. Oh, the cover is just stunning and the edges are so, so gorgeous. It is a Vikings and like Nordic god and enemies to lovers fantasy is how it's described. I read the first couple of lines and then I like two seconds later, I was on page like five and I was like, where did I just transport to? Like. This was like a different world, like I was literally watching a movie. I would like read the next few lines and I was like just like this place. What's that movie? Tomorrowland where she picks up the coin and she's like in a different world. Like I kid you not, that is the feeling that I had got when I read this book. I was like reading it I was like, where am I? And then I would read it and I'd be like, huh? I'm 50 pages in and it is incredible. The plot line and the world building is on par with Fourth Wing. So far, the banter is on par with Kai and Peyton from Powerless. Take with that what you will. The very last book I'm in the middle of is The Book of Azrael. I'm 20% into that book right now and I honestly think I have to reread it because <laughs> I have no idea what I read in that 20%. There's a lot of characters, there's a lot of stuff happening and I like read the reviews and they were saying that it was like pretty easy fantasy book to get into for like the world and like how complex it was am i like just dumb none of it is like going through my brain if you guys were wondering what was like down here the entire time this is abdul i got him as a gift isn't he so cute he is just the most precious thing in the world he is gonna just keep us company he is gonna be moral support he is gonna be the good luck charm i'm going to try and finish this tonight so we can get a head start and then i'll keep you guys updated on what i read Christian just has a way with words and that man can say all the sweet nothings he wants to me because I will eat it up every time. Half of these tabs are just words that he says. I pulled them into like one of my tabs, right? This one's a good one. Despite what I said about love being a drug, Stella was my greatest high. Oh my god. You guys are gonna be so proud of me because at work today I finished Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez and this book is so freaking good. I basically was listening to Part of Your World on audiobook the entire day and I absolutely flew through it. It was the perfect rom-com vibes. Like Daniel, the male main character in this book is, oh my god, he is an angel. He is so far from being a red flag that there is no greener grass on the other side. Daniel deserves the world. I will literally die to protect. Part of Your World is about Daniel who is from a very, very small town, basically a village he's only ever known that he's not rich but he has so much heart and alexis is the exact opposite not that she doesn't have a lot of heart but she comes from wealth she comes from generational wealth her family they were surgeons before her and stuff so she is super duper smart like book smart she kills it in the hospital oh maybe we shouldn't say that we should not say people are killing it in the hospital she's doing real good at her job like her career is thriving and everything 
but they are like opposites that complement each other in the most perfect way and their love or at least Daniel's love for her was so wholesome so wholesome all he did was just want to love her you know what book is good because i read yours truly the second book in this like interconnected thing alone and it's about her best friend and it takes place after this the book was spoiled for me but i stayed for the journey because just i wanted to see how they got through their struggles how they got together and how they found love that's how you know a book is good when you want to read about all the small things that they go through and all their inside jokes with each other if you're wondering why I would even pick up a new book if I'm in the middle of four other books is because I'm in Spotify jail over Twisted Lies. I didn't bring the book with me, so at work I was just like listening to Twisted Lies and then all of a sudden it stops. Before I got into Spotify jail though, I finished a good chunk of the audio, so I only have literally like 20 pages of the book left. So I'll be finishing this really, really soon. Lastly, I also finished a little bit more of Fighting Silence by Ali Martinez. I have around 40 pages left. So the goal for tonight is to finish Twisted Lies and Fighting Silence, and then hopefully that'll put us at 27 books in 27 days. If I can finish three books in one day, then it's easy peasy to finish two books in two days. It's like 20 minutes later, I finished Twisted Lies. This book is phenomenal. Like, I don't know if February is just a really good reading month for me so far, but I thoroughly enjoyed this. You guys can come for me, but I will die on this hill. Christian is the best, the top Twisted Men. Reese had no red flags, like he was amazing, but something about a billionaire who just wants to spoil you, loves you unconditionally, will do anything to have you and like keep you. Part of your world is good, but you need to read Twisted Lies. If there's one book from this video you're reading, it's gotta be this one. Final tab update. If this was any other day, I would take the time to recover and just soak in how amazing the series is, but there's no time for that because we gotta read Fighting Silence. This is getting so sad. I just finished Fighting Silence, and Fighting Silence is about childhood friends to lovers. They have like really bad childhood trauma from everything that has happened to them when they were younger and they find solace in each other. This book made me understand why people hate childhood friends to lovers. Because me having read Love in Other Words, I'm like, oh, childhood friends to lovers, like they're so cute. But this book was like, no. Like, no, 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 no. I just was not vibing with them. For a book that follows characters from when they were kids to their entire adulthood, I didn't feel connected to the characters in any meaningful way. I didn't really care what happened to them. My favorite parts of the book were any of the boxing scenes, just because I love kickboxing and I love boxing and just reading about that. If you read this book, there was one of the biggest miscommunications, and I'm like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Like, I'm sorry, but the miscommunication was so silly. I was so disappointed. I'm honestly just gonna rate it at two stars. It is the 28th now. It's the next day, and I'm filming this during my lunch break. So if anyone who works with me sees this, you're not watching this right now. You're not actually seeing this. I'm 40% into the Book of Azrael right now, and the enemies to lovers plotline is finally picking up. They're finally having, like, situations where they're forced to be in close proximity to each other. And I have to say, I feel like the banter is a little overhyped. If this is genuine enemies to lovers, then I don't think I want it because their banter has no wit in it. It's kind of just like there's no underlying tension of romance. Right now, they feel more like brothers and sisters bickering. And I only say that because I have a brother, so I know what that means. He's like calling her annoying and short-tempered. And then she'll just be like, oh, but you're so rude. And I'm like, that's the banter? <laughs> Guys, I, this man just said, I didn't remember how long we talked, but somewhere amidst her laughter and smiles, I decided I would rip the world apart for her. At like the 70% mark where it's high tension and high romance, like it's very touch her and you'll die. 
It's been a couple of hours since I finished the Book of Azrael and I let my thoughts sit with it. For the Book of Azrael, in the beginning, I feel like I definitely was not having as fun of a time. It was really hard for me to get into the book and I think it was because I went into the Book of Azrael blind. Like I didn't really know anything about it except for the fact that, oh, it's supposed to be an actual enemies to lovers book. But I think like as the book went on and as I stuck through the book, it definitely got way better and I felt more connected to the characters as I understood the plotline and the story more. I definitely need romance in my fantasies. Like I don't think I'm a fantasy girl. I'm definitely a romantic girl. I think I'm going to settle on giving the book a three stars. As I was like hitting the 60% mark, I wasn't really interested in continuing with the series. With that cliffhanger ending, I will say I'm a little bit more intrigued to pick up the next book. I don't even know where to start but let me try to explain what the book of Azrael is about. The book of Azrael is basically about Diana whose whole purpose in her life is to protect her sister and her sister was on the verge of death so she makes a deal with the devil to save her and the devil's name is Caden. Caden's entire purpose is to find the book of Azrael so he can essentially open like the gates of hell and like unleash monsters amongst the humans and the mortals which that in itself seems really interesting but Liam who's one of the ancient gods is supposed to be the person who knows where the book of Azrael is so then that's when he comes and gets intertwined with Diana who's being sent by Caden to go retrieve the book overall it was like a good book it wasn't like oh I really really hated it or like I really really loved it it was just kind of like oh, okay yeah like I finished that and I'm glad I ticked it off my list with that being said we finished the one book that we had to finish today on the 28th so that brings us to 28 books in February on the 28th Honestly, right now like before bed after having read a fantasy right now I really just want a cozy small town romance like as much as I'm loving a fate inked in blood I don't think I want to pick this up right now before bed I kind of just want to like pick something easy up the two books I'm potentially debating picking up is when in Rome by Sarah Adams or stable peak by Demi Perry I loved the cheat sheet by Sarah Adams honestly this is a fairly short book it's only like 300 pages so I'm pretty confident that I can finish this tomorrow and then that will give us the 29th book for February but I've been meaning to finish the Eden series and I love Debbie Perry's writing like I feel like I always just fly through her writing even though it looks a lot thicker it's only 20 pages more than this book I think I'm gonna read the first chapter of both of the books and see which one grasps me in more Since it's been so long since I read Crimson River, I forgot the chaos that was happening and who this book is about. But it's about the last Eden brother, Matteo, and Vera Gallagher. The book basically picks up from the end of Crimson River, and Vera Gallagher is staying with the Eden, and that's where she meets Matteo. I'm like, yes and no to it. Okay, <laughs> so I like was getting through the first page of When in Rome, and when I opened When in Rome, the font was just so small in comparison to Stable Peak that in like a minute I was like already 10 pages into Stable Peak. I'm just gonna go with Stable Peak and hopefully we fly through this. The book is floppy so that's always a good sign. It's the next day now and I absolutely flew through Stable Peak. I am a good way through it. I only have a little bit left now but I stopped and fell asleep after a little bit past part two so I was more or less around a hundred or so pages into the book. The entire part one is about Vera coming to her own. Oh my god what has happened to the lighting? Um, yeah, the entire part one of the book is Vera coming to her own and just how she's dealing with everything that transpired in Crimson River. And then part two, you get both of their POVs and that's where their relationship really starts to develop. You definitely cannot pick this up without having read the rest of the books because everything in this book spoils what happens in the other books because it's very much a mix of Vera and Mateo's story, but it's also a really nice recap and refresher to everything that has happened throughout the series. And I just can't wait to see how she's going to close it out. I also can't believe this is the end of the Edens. Like, I absolutely love the Edens and this is the very last book. Oh, I'm gonna be so sad that I can't read about them with fresh eyes anymore. I 
there's only 100 pages left and Miss Stephanie Perry just put in a mystery moment. So now I'm just like, I can't stop reading. I need to know what happens. I just finished Stable Peak. This entire book just felt like a huge epilogue and so much fan service where you're seeing so many mentions of the family because this takes place on the Eden Ranch and with the Edens and there's so much family involvement, there's so much love and you see it in all of the little things that everyone does for each other and just how much everyone cares for each other in this book is just everything. There's just so much love and it's hard to hate something that has so much genuine and unconditional love and that is exactly why I freaking love the Eden series and I will recommend it to anyone through and through. I feel like Debbie Perry also did a really great job of navigating Vera's traumas and how she's healing from that. And it wasn't like a snap of the finger like, oh, she's all better, she's completely changed because she found love. I would say in the beginning it was rough because it does feel very insta-lovey, but towards the end you see how they like slowly fell in love with each other more. But definitely in the beginning it was just like, I see you, you see me, you're single, I'm single, boom, we're together. And I know that's a lot of people's hesitations when it comes to small town romance, that people are just falling in love with each other because that's like the only option there is. And in the beginning of the book, on um, like the first couple pages, it definitely feels like that. Like, oh, he's the last single brother and she's like just a single bystander. Like obviously they're gonna get together. But then you see like how their love developed and how they're there for each other through the entire book and you start to really believe in their love and that's how I felt with this book. Stable Peak is now the 29th book I read. We did read A Book A Day in February. Here's all the books on my physical TBR that we finished in this video along with Fighting Silence and The Book of Azrael. Five books is really good in the span of three days but I do want to emphasize you don't have to read 30 books to have fun reading and I hope like this gives you some clarity and behind the scenes as to how someone's reading an absurd amount in a shorter period of time. For me personally I always feel like I'm just in the middle of four or five books in different formats like I'm reading something on my Kindle, I'm reading something on my iPad, I'm reading a physical book or I'm listening to an audiobook and it's also like every available moment I have I'll just take out a book. A lot of this has been a part of me trying to stay off my phone. So instead of being on my phone for five hours a day, I was reading an extra five hours a day. And I feel like that really contributed to me finishing books really fast. And I also had an incredible reading month. A lot of the stuff that I read was like five stars, absolutely flew through it. Like it was like stable page, I just could not put it down. Then it was also a lot of audiobooks. Whenever I'm working or doing something a little bit more mundane like my laundry, I'll just be listening to an audiobook and then boom, I finished an audiobook. I feel like things like that culminate together to me reading a lot more than I do and I feel like that's the secret really behind reading more. I hope you guys do enjoy this video though because I do love filming reading vlogs and this was perfect. It was kind of a mix of can I finish my TBR and yes we did do that. I'm really proud of myself for actually sticking and finishing my TBR. I think that's like the very first time I've ever done it. I hope next month when we're picking out our TBR through our TBR prompt claw machine I'll likely hold myself to that March TBR because we're making a mission in 2024 to get through our physical TBR. That being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!